what kind of information, if you say, I, according to this study done by Dr. So-and-so, right? What, how do you, what kind of information, do you just cite the source, or what kind of information do you need to provide to make the audience believe that that's a credible source? The year. Hmm? The year. Okay, why might the year be helpful? So time might be relevant. We have to determine if time is relevant. Maybe we're talking about timeless issues, like, er and you want to use old stuff because you're pointing out just how long a history this has, right? But if you're trying to talk to about up-to-date stuff, you want to also indicate the year. What else do you need to indicate? Your association with certain uh, events or events? So, Okay, so if they are members of a professional organization or something that, especially if they're like leaders in that organization, right? But you want to pick a, like the physicist association. If you, you don't want to pull out the, the dental associations if you're going to talk about nuclear physics, physics or whatever. Nuclear, Good. Association memberships, what else? How do you how do you tell people that in your writing? Get that kind of information. From the association? Mm -hmm. Like doctor, whoever from the association of So you actually say it in the text, right? So when you're identifying the, the source you're talking about with signal phrases and such, you're doing so in order to give the reader context, right? You, that's actually part of your argument when you're citing sources. Lots of, people, lots of times students or beginning writers or early writers or whatever try not to cite sources, right? They don't want to say that they got this from the, they just talk like it's stuff they know. That was my favorite experience in, uh, when I was an early teacher. I had a student who was writing a, a paper on uh, Michael Jordan, talking about Michael Jordan and he was defending Michael Jordan as the best basketball player everywhere, which to me required no defense. But he, um, so he wrote this whole essay about Michael Jordan, but he didn't cite a single source. You know, he was talking about stats, and he talked about this game and that game, and uh, he gave real concrete evidence, but he didn't cite a single source. And I said to the student, I said, you, you, you can't just claim all this stuff. You've got to cite how you know this, right? So when he gave me the revised paper back, it all had in parentheses, uh, I think he used parenthetical citation. Do you all know what parenthetical citation is? We'll talk about that in a second. But in the parenthetical citation, it said S-I-K. I'm like, what S-I-K? So I flipped to the work cited list at the back, and S-I-K stood for stuff I know, <laughs> which was pretty funny. But. You can't be, you can't, your whole paper can't be SIK. You can't, you can't just be, it can't just be stuff you know. And the reason is, is you're, <laughs> while you're credible in certain contexts, you're also talking to a much broader audience, right? And they can't verify what you know or don't know. So the more sources you can, you have to balance this, but the more sources you cite, the more that you can bring in and tell your reader, this person says this, right? is you look smarter, right? You've done all this reading, you're the expert now. You went and read all of this stuff and you can talk about and identify smart people and talk about what they know. That makes you smarter, okay? And that's, that's your major goal when you're writing academic discourse is to be credible, to have something interesting to say. It's not to write an essay to get X about, amount of points in your English 1302 class and that you just hope you get through this. It's to be a smarter person. That's the goal, right? You want people, you want to be the kind of person people listen to and believe and solicit opinions from. That's what you want to be, I hope. 
You don't want to be the person that got the C in 1302, but you got through it. That's, that's, not, that's not what you want to be. It might be what you joke about with your friends, right? Or when you go home on break and your people are asking how your English class is going and everything. Sure, that's fine. That's one way you establish a certain kind of credibility or what we call <laughs> ethos, right? Credibility is another word for the word ethos. Have you talked about that word in any of your classes? Ethos means the kind of character, right? The kind of demeanor, the kind of credibility you have this, as a speaker, as someone's speaking. So certainly when you're in certain contexts talking to certain people, you might joke about how you hate your English class and how you just hope you get through it, right? You might say that. But the fact is, is you're not here because you just want to get by, I hope, because you're going to spend, that this will be the course of your whole life. Right? You don't want to just get by through your whole life. You want to establish yourself as a person. You want to be the person somebody wants to date. You want to be the person somebody wants to have a family with. You want to be the person someone wants to hire. Right? That's what you want to be. And this is how it starts, is by establishing your credibility. And, it, and you establish your credibility by paying attention to context and um, and purpose and all of that stuff. So what we'll do here, we'll look at a couple things because you don't always have to say, according to Dr. So-and-so from, from the Professional Association of Physicists, and right, you don't always have to be uh, looking at that level of source citation. The way we cite, the way we, we draw on sources and cite depends very much on our reader's purpose and expectations, right? How are you doing? You're not supposed to be back in 1302. I thought you'd be done with it. You did 1301 like a year ago or so, right? That's good to see. Um, so it depends on your reader's purpose, right? So you're not only, you're not just writing for a purpose, you're writing so someone reads it. And when that person reads it, they've got a purpose for having read you, right? So there's various different levels of, right, of the type of citation. You pointed out when uh, you said it should be recent, right? So that reader's purpose would be to find the most current, up-to-date materials on stuff. So that's part of what you're going to be thinking about. But let's look at, uh, we're just going to look at across, uh, uh, one topic across a little bit, a number of genres. I thought music, uh, I usually do parking, but I, I didn't want to. Usually, when I talk about parking, it's for a different reason. So for this one, I decided music. So walrus is the saddest music in the world. So what, just based on uh, on looking at this this page, what kind of what are we looking at here? What kind of source is this? Newspaper. Okay, it looks newspapery, right? The walrus, this, this is where you're getting at. It's probably an online newspaper, right? So what kind of credibility does does a newspaper have to have? And what and by the name of it, the walrus, what kind of newspaper do you think it is? The walrus. Is this where you would go to get your like, in-depth financial Right. Why not? The walrus. Most of those guys aren't really credible in my opinion. Oh, well, you're, you, you just in general don't like newspapers, <laughs> that, which is fair. But especially a newspaper called The Walrus probably isn't trying to be your financial expert, right? For entertainment purposes. Okay. The Walrus kind of has a sense that it's like, this is the entertaining rag that you read, right? It's the, it's the time waster. It's what you, where you go if you're at work and you don't feel like working. Right? And Facebook is boring today. Okay, so with reference to minor key, keys, uh, now notice Moira Farr's May 2000 article on music and depression, the walrus asked several writers and music critics for a compilation of their saddest songs. So what in this opening paragraph in this just kind of entertaining newspaper is going on to establish authority?
you already know what it's about, right? That's the that's what what popular journalism does. It kind of just like sets up what you're gonna get in the opening paragraph, right? And what are you gonna get? What what is this article about? Compilation of the saddest songs ever, according to them. So how how do they establish any kind of authority to be telling us the saddest songs? Okay, there, there's a reference to Minor Keys, Moira Fair, Farr's article in 2008. Do you know that, who that is? So what's the assumption being made there? That she's up, that we're being signaled that, right? So presumably, what can we, what conclusion do we draw about the audience of the walrus? They like music. They like music. I think the writers here are assuming that whoever's reading this is a kind of a, a daily reader, right? That, that would, they would know who Moira Farr is and read that article. But if you didn't read the article, what could you do? Click it. Was that what you would do? Is that how you would cite this in a, an academic article? Is that enough? It's not, right? It's not enough to just mention the article and then have a hyperlink to it. You'd have to list it, right, in a work cited. Why? So people can reference the article. Uh-huh. So people can reference it. Here, we're, the assumption is that the link is there, right? What if the link's dead? Well, you can't, you can't cite it. But what... But does it matter to the readers of the walrus if that if that link's dead? Are they going to go, oh, this is a worthless? Now they go, shoot, the link's dead, right? And move on. It's they're, they're not probably. And chances are, are they going to even click that link? No, because that. What's their purpose in reading this article? Yes, they want to get to the saddest songs. Who cares what Moira Farr said? That's not really important to me. What are the saddest songs? I want to feel sad. They probably got to this because you did a Google search for fat, for saddest songs. I mean, because you just broke up with somebody. I'm sad. Okay, how else do they uh, establish credibility here? They asked several writers and music critics. Good. Did everybody hear that? They asked several writers and music critics. So that's an appeal to authority, right? If people are music critics and they're writers, they must know something about what they're talking about. And we asked them, so we got their opinion. 